you know that ladies don't have to take their hats off? Yeah, there was something about it. My grandma was auxiliary too. Oh, because can we return that seat on yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. That's why I told you I <coughs> don't have to. Yeah. Hey, Chuck. Hmm? Seven o'clock. Oh, I was that, going back. That clock's one. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll call the uh, Wednesday, December 8th, 2021, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. Uh, roll call. Jacqueline Niagara. Charles Smallwood. Sylvia Henry. Sean Cuff. Sam Solars. Jessica Bonniewell. Steve Gribman, City Planner. Okay. The Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'd look for approval of the September 8th minutes. I make an I make a motion to approve the minutes as written for September 8th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, looking for approval of the minutes of the November 10th, 2021 meeting. I make a motion to approve those of November 10th. I'll second. Okay. Sean seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Did you do an approval of the agenda? Excuse me? Did we do approval of the agenda? Mm -hmm. no. no. Oh, okay. Got ahead of myself. Looking for approval of the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda as written. Second? I can second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I look for a motion to uh, close the planning and zoning meeting and open a public hearing for the uh, subway. subway issue. Okay, I make a motion to close the planning and zoning meeting and open the public hearing. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. At 7.02, I'll close the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting and open the uh, public hearing and turn it over to our city planner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commission, the uh, item in front of you actually consists of two separate uh, actions. Uh, related to the occupancy of an existing building by a proposed subway restaurant. Uh, that facility is uh, along Highway 12 at the corner of uh, Highway 12 in Arizona, which is a side street that provides access uh, through that area to the back block and uh, to Third Street behind the site. The site's currently occupied by a building. A portion of that building is um, uh, utilized by uh, a liquor store. And then there's a portion of it that is vacant. You, uh, some time ago, uh, held a SNAP fitness uh, facility. And um, again, now is vacant and proposed to be occupied by um, the uh, Subway restaurant. The restaurant itself is allowed in the B2 district, um, but the drive-through requires a conditional use permit. So uh, the way our code is set up, um, restaurants are commonly allowed in the district, but this, the drive-through aspect of it um, kicks in a requirement for conditional use permit. Uh, the purpose of that review is to make sure that there's adequate circulation. Drive-throughs typically require or uh, generate a lot of traffic and um, can raise some circulation issues on the site. So the city puts it in a conditional use permit class to make sure you have the opportunity to review it and uh, uh, make any uh, uh, recommendations or accommodations to uh, ensure that the site isn't overwhelmed by the use or that the streets surrounding it uh, don't get overly congested as a result of the, the proposal. 
So that's the first item. The second item also relates to that drive through and the, the drive through lane uh, is designed to circulate around the building uh, along Arizona, then to third, and then into the site from the north. And then a drive through lane uh, along the, what would be the west boundary of the property to a, a window, uh, 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 order board uh, mounted on the building, and then a window uh, for service uh, on the west side of that building as well. Then circulating back into the main parking lot in front of the building and out uh, then to Arizona. So um, that, that drive through lane um, is required, uh, like other uh, driveways and parking areas, to be at least five feet away from the property line in a commercial district. And right alongside of the building, the applicants uh, uh, identify uh, a combination of uh, mechanical equipment that uh, is existing and supporting the, uh, the building. And so they are requesting a reduction of that setback uh, for that five foot uh, curb line for the drive-through uh, to be just four and a half feet from the property line. So a six inch, uh, half foot um, encroachment into the required set, set, setback, uh, nominal, but still requires the variance processing. So uh, those are the two items uh, before the planning commission. When we look at conditional use permits, we're always looking to make sure that um, there's general code compliance and there are some specific requirements for drive-throughs in the code. I cite those in the uh, uh, staff report for you. Uh, primarily, again, they relate to uh, the lane itself and if there's any impacts on um, uh, the surrounding properties, particularly if there's adjacent residential, which there is not in this case. And uh, probably the most uh, uh, obvious substantive uh, requirement is the length of the drive through which uh, by code is, has to be at least 120 feet for stacking of uh, vehicles in that lane. Um, in this case, the applicants have approximately 180 feet of stacking from the uh, window to all the way back to third. So they would be able to stack um, eight, nine, depending on the, uh, the stack, sometimes 10 cars in that lane. That should be more than adequate to um, serve this type of business. So uh, we believe it uh, meets the requirements of the conditional use permit as they're identified in the code. Again, when we look at CUPs, we look for code compliance and also general character of the area. Is this a, a use that uh, seems to fit, not just on the property, but in the, uh, in the area? And this is uh, dominated by uh, commercial uses um, along that stretch, the site zone B2 commercial, as well as everything along Highway 12 east and west of this for uh, uh, quite a bit. And then um, institutional and light industrial uh, property to the north. So there doesn't appear to be any reason that a drive-through in this location would interfere with uh, existing land uses or, or traffic patterns. The um, uh, city administrator noted that MnDOT did uh, comment that um, eventually uh, access uh, on and off Highway 12 at that road uh, may end up uh, requiring some turn lanes. Uh, when at some point as traffic continues to uh, increase and more development happens along that area. Um, but that uh, shouldn't be affected by the drive through lane itself since there is a, a street intersection here. This is not a, a direct driveway access uh, for this property. Uh, the second item on variance is we have a different standard of review. Um, the, the standard of review for variances relates to whether or not there are unique conditions on the property that uh, create um, practical difficulties in doing here what we would normally allow uh, uh, on uh, properties similar to it. Uh, in this case, the um, uh, mechanic, I should also mention that a requirement in the code is that uh, the conditions that you find uh, can't be created by the, uh, the owner or the applicant. They have to be pre-existing on the property. And in this particular case, the um, uh, that side of the building has some mechanical equipment adjacent to the building and also uh, along the common property line uh, with the commercial property to the west. And so um, uh, in a lot of times you'll see drive-throughs where they just hug right along the building uh, up to the window, but because of the equipment that's there, it has to veer away from the building a little bit and that causes an encroachment into that setback. Again, just about a half a foot. Um, but that is an existing condition of this site uh, it probably would be possible to narrow the driveway six inches, um, but we think it's probably better uh, to avoid, especially if, if that lane is going to shift a little bit, uh, it would be best to avoid narrowing it just so uh, cars maneuver through that uh, facility. And the uh, amount of variance here was so slight that 
um, staff felt uh, the variance uh, in encroachment was probably a better solution than, um, uh, than trying to change or monkey with the, uh, the width of the, of the lane itself. So um, we believe that there are conditions on the property that would support the variance here. Again, particularly the, uh, the fact that uh, this is commercial property along here and um, that uh, six inch encroachment more or less uh, is almost certainly not going to impact um, the neighboring property and it will accommodate uh, what we would expect to be a common use in a commercial, commercial district that is a restaurant drive through So um, we believe the conditions are present for variance and have recommended approval of both the conditional use permit and the variance uh, to um, uh, this proposed subway. We did add uh, some conditions to that uh, recommendation and I'll just run through those uh, real quickly for you, um, uh, Chair and Commission. First of all, the uh, code requires that any disturbed area of the site needs to be landscaped. Um, the code is pretty uh, uh, general on uh, what kind of landscaping that consists of. So it can be uh, just uh, grass or uh, trees and shrubs certainly are always welcome. Um, uh, and uh, the more the merrier here, but it does have to be at least covered with um, uh, uh, landscape material uh, in that area that's being disturbed. That's typically going to be the area uh, flanking that drive and um, uh, to probably to the property line along, along its extent. Uh, secondly, uh, applicant provides curb along all areas of new pavement for the drive through lane. Um, our code requires curbing for uh, uh, driveways and parking lots and drive through lanes uh, as, it, uh, as it shows uh, or as proposed here. Um, the existing parking lot that serves this facility uh, is uh, paved but not curbed and that's an existing condition uh, because we're not expanding the building or expanding that parking lot um, staff felt it was not appropriate to require curbing of that existing parking lot that um, uh, that would raise uh, quite a few drainage uh, issues and the entire site would probably end up having to be regraded to accommodate uh, a change like that so we think at some point if the building is ever expanded and that parking lot needs to be um, uh, redone for that purpose at that point would be the appropriate time to require uh, upgrading the curbing around the existing lot. Uh, but because the drive through lane is new, uh, we would recommend that curbing uh, be in that location. Uh, that does a couple of things. It does manage the drainage, but it also kind of confines cars to that lane. Uh, so it keeps them from uh, wavering either into the building or off into the uh, into the side yard. So um, it, it helps uh, tri funnel traffic through that area and uh, we think that would be an important improvement here. Uh, the third item is the applicant stripes the remainder of the paved parking lot to accommodate the maximum number of parking spaces on the existing parking, uh, on the existing pavement. When we did a parking analysis uh, for this and we, ident we talked about this in the staff report a little bit, um, uh, we had to generalize because we don't know the floor plan of the, of the liquor store per se, but um, we made an estimate that there would be 34 parking spaces required for the restaurant and the liquor store uh, combined. That's probably on the high end, frankly, uh, in terms of what would actually be required. Uh, and in talking to the engineer, uh, they would agree that if we stripe the existing lot, maximize the number of spaces on that existing lot, we should more than uh, uh, adequately uh, accommodate parking for both of the uses in this building. And again, if there's ever any additions to this property and there are there is some vacant space that an addition could happen, that that would be an appropriate time to relook at that parking lot to design and, um, and curbing and striping and everything at that point. Fourth item is that the city reserves the right to require an expanded and improved parking area in the event that we find that the parking on the site overflows that existing area. We don't expect that to happen, but uh, if we find all of a sudden that we've got a lot of parking on the street or on the dirt uh, part of that lot, uh, that part of the conditional use permit condition here would be that we would be able to uh, prevail on the property owner to add some paved uh, parking to that site if it's ever needed uh, under the existing CUP, or uh, I should say proposed CUP here. Uh, the fifth item is that the applicant complies with the requirements of the engineer and the engineer has a report with a handful of uh, conditions uh, as well in your packet. And then uh, any other recommendations that uh, uh, the Planning Commission uh, uh, finds uh, necessary as a result of uh, your discussion at the hearing tonight, those six conditions as well as the engineer's report, staff does recommend approval of both the conditional use permit and the variance. 
and the findings that uh, we've identified in the staff report should support those uh, if you're inclined to uh, um, make that motion. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'll uh, be happy to answer any questions if you've got any of me. Okay. No, it's, it seems pretty straightforward. You pretty much covered everything I could think of. Does anyone else have anything? Mm -hmm. Uh, at least one of them is a uh, electrical utility cabinet. Um, I, I visited the site. I, I couldn't tell you exactly what the mechanical equipment is specifically for, but um, uh, what, some of it's right adjacent to the building, so I wouldn't doubt that it's related to uh, 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 fan, air intake, uh, that kind of, uh, of equipment. Uh, on the property line, more or less, is the an electrical box. Um, so there's a, a, a combination of mechanical equipment out there, and that's common on commercial sites. In this case, it just happens to be um, slightly interfering with uh, adding that drive lane. So um, normally, it's on the roof, isn't it? Uh, sometimes uh, builders will put that kind of equipment on a roof. Uh, it depends on the construction of the building itself, but it's not uncommon for it to be on the ground too. Okay, Questions? Anyone from the audience that would like to say anything? Okay. I just, um, Commission and uh, Chair and Commission, I would just like to say that the recommendations from the engineer are very similar to the recommendations from the planner. Um, they're just saying that they should include a pavement section um, for proposed bituminous drive through lane. The proposed parking spaces shall be striped and dimensions shall be included on the plans and then all construction should be in, uh, in accordance with the City of Montrose standards. So pretty standard stuff. Nothing too, um, too much of a big, big deal. Thank you. Okay, at this time I look for a uh, motion to close the public hearing and reopen the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. To uh, close the public hearing and uh, reopen the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it's 7 18. I close the public hearing and reopen the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Um, any further discussion on any of the uh, recommendations? Different votes for the variance and the conditional use permit. Um, the, at the planning commission level, you could make a single motion if you want to include both, um, uh, but or you could do it uh, in two. So it's kind of what uh, whatever you feel comfortable with. But okay, conditions would apply to both variance and conditional use permit uh, in our recommendation. Okay. I'd be looking for a motion on the conditional use permit and variance for 125 Nelson Boulevard. I make a motion to accept <coughs> the permit and the variance for the property at located 125 Nelson Boulevard to allow retail service or commercial. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Zero. Uh, any old business? No old business that I'm aware of, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, new business. 
just by a way of update, uh, um, some of what probably I've told you uh, for several meetings now, the city continues to uh, have discussions with uh, a number of uh, interested residential developers on several sites around the community, both north and south of Highway 12. Um, there are a lot of properties in play and uh, a lot of potential lots uh, being uh, uh, considered and planned for by the development side. So uh, we're, uh, we've been meeting with those developers, uh, talking about what the standards would be and um, looking at giving them concept feedback at this point at the staff level. Um, and uh, so we expect uh, to have uh, quite a bit of activity uh, any month now. Um, uh, so I don't have any uh, pending applications, but uh, I think a number of them are getting uh, pretty close. Uh, like things happen at the grocery store, everybody's going to hit the checkout line at the same time, <laughs> I'm expecting. Uh, so there will be one of these times we're going to have some long meetings, I wouldn't doubt. Um, the uh, uh, obviously the subway item was on tonight's agenda. We've been uh, looking forward to that one coming f uh, coming through, and um, probably of interest to planning commission is that uh, your recommendation on the uh, Rolling Meadows uh, plat uh, that you looked at in November will be on a council agenda next Monday night. So that one uh, is is going forward to council, and um, we'll have a decision at at, at that point. Um, on preliminary plat for um, uh, that uh, that project that the Planning Commission again recommended prior, previously. So I think that's that's the summary. So all right, thank you. Okay, our uh, next meeting will be Wednesday, January twelfth, twenty twenty two, held here at the community center at seven p.m. Uh, if there's nothing further, I'd uh, look for a motion for adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. I adjourn the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting at 722.